Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron and I'm back again with another kick-ass mech review. Except this time we are doing a comparison side-by-side -side of everybody's favorite, the Marauder. This is an unseen, reseen, epic, classic mech. And we're going to be looking at two flavors, the 3R, which is sort of your bread and butter, uh, AC5, two PPCs, two medium lasers, and the 3D variant which swaps out that AC5 and the ammo for a large laser and a whole bunch of heat sinks. So, which one's gonna do better? We're gonna find out. Uh, thanks to Frep and Litany Against Fear. I know both of you guys and a few others had asked for a look at the Marauder, so I uh, appreciate the recommendation there. Uh, I'm really excited. The Marauder is one of my, my favorites. My, one of my first loves uh, when I bought the original box set, well, the original for me, which was in the, which in the early 90s, I guess, it had the you know, the variety of plastic minis and the Marauder just always uh, struck me as an awesome mech. So really excited to see how this one stacks up. So which one's going to be better? We're going to look at the weapons, the offensive, defensive, efficiency. We're going to take a look at rolls, everything, the whole gamut. So don't go away. Guys, that's coming right up. What's up, guys? All right, let's get this Marauder comparison kicked off. So. Uh, most of what you're going to see is uh, very similar to all of the other mech reviews that we've done in our sort of second iteration of, of the Battlelytics engine here. Um, but on some of the screens, you'll see, you know, double the charts, double the graphs, and get that side-by-side -side comparison. Um, and whenever we have that, um, just always remember left to right, top to bottom, inside to outside. So that means that when we're comparing mech A to mech B, mech A is always going to be on the left. Or if it's a top to bottom comparison, it'll be on the top. Or if it's like a donut chart, it'll always be on the inside. Mech B on the outside, on the right, and on the bottom. Um, I'll talk you through it. I think it'll make sense when you're looking at it. Um, but let's first start with the technical overview. So the first mech we're going to look at is the Marauder 3R. So uh, 75 tons on both of these Marauders, obviously. This one, though, is much cheaper battle value at 1363 a um, little fluff on this mech. It was produced in 2819, so this is early succession wars. Uh, and according to the master unit list, this unit persisted indefinitely. It, it hasn't gone extinct yet, so even all the way through 3150 and beyond, this mech is still around, which is pretty cool. Um, so the movement on this mech, uh, 4.6, has 16 heat sinks, uh, no special equipment, right? Standard Succession Wars era um, gear there. It has 11.5 tons of armor. So total armor coverage is 79.7%, and that's gonna be consistent on both of these variants. Now, um, that is pretty healthy armor coverage for this mech. However, if we look at the center there, and we'll dive into this a little bit more in the defensive analysis, the Marauder is a little bit under-armored in the legs and the side torsos. Uh, meanwhile, the CT and the arms, uh, very, very bulky there in terms of the armor. Um, speaking of the arms, no hand actuators on this mech. Instead, um, it has a pair of PPCs uh, on the left torso. It mounts an auto cannon 5, and then also in those arms, um, it has uh, medium lasers as well. Uh, the ammo for the auto cannon in this particular variant is stored in that left torso. Now on the Marauder 3D, uh, again, 75 ton heavy intersphere mech. However, this one has a battle value of 1470. Um, this one was produced a few years later in 2834. Uh, and like its cousin, the 3R, this variant persisted all the way through uh, into the early Republic. Um, so what's different about this? So first thing is the heat sinks uh, go from 16 to 20. So it picks up four additional heat sinks um, and that's in exchange uh, uh, for the auto cannon, right? So it drops that heavy auto cannon and the ton of ammunition and replaces it with a large laser. So using that extra tonnage puts it all into heat sinks. Everything else is identical. So armor coverage still at 79.7%. Um, you know, the, the distribution of armor is still identical. Uh, still no hand actuators. All that is basically the same. The only thing that changes again, that AC5 gets swapped for a large laser and that tonnage gets put into heat sink. So that's basically what we're looking at here. And that simple change uh, costs over 100 BV 
uh, for, for the base battle value for this mech, which is, which is not insignificant. That's a pretty substantial amount. All right, so here's where things get exciting. Now we're gonna do the side-by-side -side comparison of our offensive benchmarks for the Marauder 3R and the Marauder 3D. So the first thing you'll notice here is we have uh, two pairs of graphs. Our, uh, our bar charts have twice as many bars on them uh, and our sort of our donut charts there in the bottom right, you can see it's got uh, twice as much data in there. So I'm gonna walk through basically how this works out. So at the top, you'll see it says variant 3R versus 3D. So again, the 3R is always gonna be on the left side. It's always gonna be the top, uh, the top bar if it's a vertically aligned chart, and it's always gonna be on the inside um, in the case that uh, you know we have let those types of donut charts there like you see in the lethality index. So let's start with the damage output for the 3R. So on the left side, um, you know, the first thing we notice here is on the red line side. Um, so the, the mechs, both of them, can heat up very quickly. Um, those PPCs, regardless of if you've got 16 or 20 heat sinks, I mean, they can suck down heat uh, pretty aggressively. So you have to be careful with this mech. That's the first thing we notice. However, from a baseline perspective, the 3R is actually more consistent. Um, that damage sort of climbs more incrementally over time. Um, and that's because that AC5 is much easier to bring into play than that large laser, which, you know, naturally that makes a lot of sense. Um, however, when we go down to the optimized damage benchmark, you know, they look pretty similar, right? The only difference, again, the AC5 comes into play a little sooner, allowing you to pump those PPCs out, um, you know, at further range. And then on the 3R side, which again, on the right side, you can see that you know, you can bring that damage up a little bit more at close range because you can bring those medium lasers into play more reliably. You've got 20 heat sinks as opposed to 16, so you can bleed off the heat a little bit quicker and sustain heavier fire uh, longer. Um, but again, at longer ranges, um, the three R is actually more effective, again, because that AC5 is much easier to bring into play with two PPCs than the large laser, right? If you're packing, uh, and firing all of those heavy laser weapons, you're building up 28 points of heat, um, which is an instant uh, gunnery penalty. Um, and that's assuming you're standing still, right? If you're walking or running, it could be nine, 10 points of heat, which is a, a huge amount of heat. Um, whereas on the 3R side, if you're firing the two PPCs and the AC5, um, obviously it's much less heat there, right? So um, let's look at the numbers in the bar chart at the bottom. They are very close. So the baseline ACD, um, of the 3R was slightly less, about 10 points less, so 113 versus 123. The optimized damage much closer, um, so 127.5 to 131.7. That means there was much, uh, much more wiggle room for us to play with that, um, you know, that heat curve on the 3R, um, and we were able to get just a little bit more damage percentage-wise out of that mech, although, again, the 3D point-for-point point, um, of damage just, uh, it's still outperformed. So, all right, so there's that. Red line damage was basically the same. Both of these mechs, again, heating up tremendously. Um, it was interesting. They came out exactly the same to the decimal. Um, so lethality. So how did they do against that javelin? So they were chasing the javelin around, shooting at it. Basically, um, what we're seeing here, the top bars, again, they, they represent the 3R. The bottom bars represent the 3D. Um, so the 3D obviously had a much higher damage per hit. Right, um, and why is that? Well, again, you know, it's bringing both PPCs into play more because it can fire twin PPCs and walk or run and only build up a couple points of heat. Whereas if the 3R does that, it builds up quite a bit. Um, so it's bringing those PPCs into play more, and it has that large laser over the AC5. So we're going to expect higher damage per hit there. Um, however, the 3R generated more critical hits. That's because it's firing more weapons. Um, the AC5 is easier to bring into play than the large laser. So if you look at the, the sheer number of times you're you know, firing, the chance for crits is actually higher, um, not by much, but it's higher on that 3R. Um, and time to kill was very similar, um, you know, 12.1, 12.2. Um, so both of them did pretty well um, in that regard. Um, you yeah, know, it's pretty average, right around, around 12. So. When you break down the kills um, against the Javelin, um, what, we, what we saw was that the 3R only brought down the Javelin 55.8% of the time uh, by time we hit turn 12. Uh, the 3D brought it down 76.5%. Um, and so that, when, when we dug into the numbers, that was because, again, you're firing 
bigger weapons taking out bigger chunks of armor so when you're hitting the javelin right which again these guys are not hitting a lot but when they're hitting the javelin uh, it's doing substantially more damage it's getting those ct kills it's transferring internally um, and so that that's kind of what you see here you know you'll also notice that there's a slightly higher percentage by about you know one and a little over one percent on the head kills and again you know that's because the javelin's got seven armor on the head three structure a single ppc shot will instant kill it um so again you're bringing those ppcs into play more so interesting uh comparison there um so that was kind of interesting and and you know interestingly enough um if you look at the time to kill versus the percent of kills at turn 12 um, i had to kind of dig into the numbers and try to figure that out and unravel it and really that javelin is like hanging by a thread um, at turn 12 so even though it only got 55.8 percent kills i mean it's just it's it's maybe like a half a turn another round of shooting um, and that javelin basically is going to be dead you know 100 percent of the time so it's kind of interesting to see um, how that played out so in terms of damage delivery these mechs are very similar again the 3d taking out big chunks uh, at a time which is better the 3r just sort of being able to bring more guns to bear and bring those guns into play sooner um, so kind of interesting to take a look at these so far i don't have a clear winner let's check out the defensive specs and see how they stack up all right so defensively um real quick on the mobility side so this is four six no jump capabilities pretty standard for a heavy mech so it can claim that plus two mod um even with a movement penalty so it can run you know it can turn a hex facing and move it can go uphill it can enter a you know light forest or something along those lines and still get that plus two mod which is great um, if it takes the minus two, minus three penalty, that, um, that target mod's going to drop. And then once you're at MP minus four, obviously that mod goes away entirely. So, um, it can still claim a mod, you know, that plus two is, is really critical. Um, it just, you know, again, with the 2d6 curve, the difference between a two and a one is, is huge. So interesting to see that. Now, in terms of motive hits, the three R, uh, was at 36.7%, the 3d at 42.2%. So why is that? Well, Put a pin in that. Let's look at the survivability, and, and that will explain it for us. Uh, so if you look at the defensive, um, you know, basically the survivability benchmark, right? So this is where we put the mech up against an awesome, and the awesome just pounds it into, into you know, oblivion. The 3D uh, basically was only killed 8.1% of the time. The 3R was killed 35.9% of the time. And if you look at the breakdown inside the donut there, 29.1% of the time this thing was killed by ammo explosions. Why? Well, you know, look at the big bar chart on the right. So what you'll see there, normally if both mechs had ammo, you would see two sets of bars. Only the 3R has ammo. It only has it in the left torso. And again, this is one of those mechs where the only critical slot in the left torso is a juicy ammo bin. So anything in that left torso, any critical hit, that whole mech explodes. So bad news there. Now, if we look at the center diagram, I called this out earlier in the technical overview. Look at the CT and look at the arms. All of these things over armored. Look at the rear armor on this mech, very much over armored. You look at the side torsos, you look at the legs, very much under armored, right? The side torsos, especially considering it has that ammo, that is a huge weak spot for this mech. So if you're playing against it, try to get those side arc shots on it. You know, drill into those side torsos, especially on the left, obviously. Um, and you can take that 3R out pretty quickly. Now, the 3D doesn't have that problem. And so you can see there's a massive improvement in the overall survivability. So when we look at the motive hits back to the top left, they're very high in general, right? For, for a 75 ton mech with, you know, uh, 11 and a half tons of armor. The legs very much under armored. And then the 42% on the 3D is because it's just surviving so much longer. Um, those leg hits are just happening more often. Those actuator hits are, are happening more often. Whereas the 3R is just getting taken out of the fight uh, more often than not. So it doesn't survive long enough to get that, that uptick in motive hit. So, pretty interesting defensively so if you know if i'm comparing these side by side it's a no-brainer for me um, even for the extra 100 bv but let's go to the efficiency and see what the numbers tell us battle value 1363 on the 3r 1470 for the 3d all right let's take a look at our effectiveness benchmark so again on the left side we got the 3r right side we got the 3d so 
Um, the 3D, which is on the right there, you can see it's, it's doing pretty good. I mean, it has a survivability of 91.9%. So that white line staying up there and uh, the two area charts really not separating very much at all uh, until you start getting within like six inches, things like that. So this Marauder really stays in the fight. Uh, a really, I mean, basically the, the entire game. This thing's gonna be able to take a beating and deliver a punch. That's, you know, that's excellent. Meanwhile, back to the left, the 3R, you can see separation there, right? You can see the darker blue um, separating from that lighter blue and that effective ACD dropping uh, into, you know, in, in basically in time with the survivability, which was only 64.1%. Now, in general, 64.1% is pretty good. Um, however, when compared to a staggering 91.9%, and again, this is against an awesome firing three PPCs, you know, almost every turn at this mech. That's, that's staggeringly high. So let's look at the efficiency metrics. So again, our baseline ACDs, 113 and 123 respectively. Optimized ACDs were a little bit closer, 127 and a half, 131.7. When we look at the effective ACD, so again, effective is your optimized times your survivability at every range increment, turn over turn, um, summed up. You've got 107 on the 3R and 127.9 on the 3D. <laughs> There's a huge chunk missing from the 3R there uh, in the neighborhood of one sixth, and I can't convert that a percent in my head right now for some reason. Um, but on the on the 3D side, um, the uh, obviously it only loses like four points, right? So that's extremely impressive, and that is why the 3D has a much higher efficiency score. So 5.61 on the 3R, 6.21 on the 3D, so 6.21 substantially above average. Now, please note the 5.61, also very good number. Uh, I mean, both of these, I mean, you, you can't go wrong with the Marauder, it's a solid chassis, both these variants, very good. Um, 5.61 is above average, it's to the right of the bell curve, um, but 6.21 is phenomenal. Um, and for that extra 100, you're getting so much more um, in there. So let's take a look at gunnery score sensitivity real quick. Um, so the 3R was at a 0.644, the 3D at a 0.545. So why is that? Well, um, the 3R is more sensitive to a better gunnery score because it's doing so much more damage at long range. Once it gets in close, it's dying, it's losing uh, a lot of its damage there. Um, and so if you want to keep this mech more effective, the 3R that is at range, um, a better pilot with, with a lower gunnery score is going to serve you well um, in that mech. Whereas the 3D, um, eh, you know, it's about 50-50. It's not as sensitive um, because it's just able to survive and you can plow it into close range if you so desire. Now, considering the battle value of this mech, you know, I would absolutely not put a rookie pilot in it. I mean, I would look at Gunnery 3, Gunnery 2 for this mech, um, you know, but that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, you can look at the Gunnery uh, Curve uh, and the sort of the, the top right there on the gunnery score sensitivity. And you can see it, it flatlines pretty hard between gunnery one and gunnery zero. So I, I, I mean, I wouldn't even really look at that. Um, an improvement, if you really want to go crazy and play gunnery one, you will get some return on investment there. But really, I think, you know, three and two is the, the sweet spot for this mech. So let's move on now to our role analysis. All right, so lots of data. Um, let's let's just recap some of the key metrics that we pulled out of this Battleytics analysis, our, our first comparison here. So again, on the left side, we've got the Marauder 3R. On the right side, we have the Marauder 3D. So our optimized ACD, we talked about this a lot. Um, these were very close, 127 to 131. Um, damage per hit, uh, 7.28 versus 8.45. So that 3D, just bringing bigger weapons into play more often. Um, and so, you know, wins out there. Survival rate, wow, so 91.9% on the Marauder 3D. That's just staggering. 64.1% um, on the 3R. Movement was the same. Red line heat, basically the same. Both of these mechs get incredibly hot very fast. Um, those PPCs um, on the 3R can basically overload the heat system very quickly. And then on the 3D, it's got that extra large laser. So if you go nuts and just fire everything, it's a lot of energy weapons. Um, so they both have the opportunity there to, to get hot real quick. Uh, efficiency. So both were really good, right? 5.61 versus 6.21. Um, the 3R being a little cheaper uh, and so a little more affordable in that regard. Again, more responsive to 
gunnery improvements, right? The sensitivity, we saw that at a 6.44. Um, so it's a little cheaper. It, it sort of plays better at longer range because it doesn't survive as well. So all of these things give it that sensitivity. And then on the 3D side, again, at a 6.21 efficiency, so really good. Um, and a sensitivity of 5.45, again, a little more expensive. And you know what, it's just surviving all the way in, does damage across the board. Um, so being able to hit further out versus closer in is less of a, um, of a consideration. Uh, not to say, again, that you should put a 4.5 pilot in it, but um, it's not as dependent on, uh, on high gunnery as the 3R might be. So um, when we kind of wrap all those things up and, and put some, some numbers on a report card, it stacks up like this. Offensively, they both scored a 3.5 out of 5. Defensively, the 3R is at a 3.5, the 3D at a 5.0 out of 5, perfect score on the defense uh, benchmark there. Mobility, 2.0 out of 5 for both these mechs. Control, again, both very hot, 1.5 out of 5. Um, despite, you know, all the extra heat sinks on the 3D, remember, it's got that extra beam weapon, so they, they actually ended up uh, basically being the same there. Uh, and then efficiency, uh, very good on both of these mechs. So three out of five on the 3R, so that's about average. And then above average, 3.5 out of five on that 3D. So um, moving down to the threat assessment, let's take a look at the threat assessment, the threat envelope, then we'll talk about roles. So the threat assessments were very similar. Both of these mechs um, looking real good, you know, in the sort of the 30 to 60 range in terms of percent uh, of threat. Um, the 3D with, with a little bit more of a heat load there, as you can see the large laser comes into play, so it dips down at that 15 inch range, um, you know, where the 3R holds steady, but the alpha strike potential is higher uh, on the 3D. So, you know, again, it's a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but at the end of the day, um, I think the 3D, um, you know, as we saw in the offensive benchmarks, really can just churn out bigger chunks of damage, more damage over time, uh, only slightly, but um, I think you know the survivability here is, is really the key. So the threat assessment doesn't, again, take into account survivability. It's just looking at sort of what you can bring to the table. And again, both these mechs, um, very similar in that regard. Um, when we look at the threat envelope, nice thing about the Marauder, it's got those big guns mounted on those nicely armored arms, so it can swing them left and right. It gets great arcs of fire. Um, so really can bring a lot to the table there. The only notable difference is that AC-5 on the 3R going all the way out to, to uh, 18 inches, uh, whereas the uh, large laser uh, goes out to 15, right? So you can see a little bit of a, of a shade difference there on the right side of that thread envelope um, versus the left side one, which is more solid all the way out um, to, that, uh, to that max 18 inch range for both the PPC and the AC-5. So. All right, when I think about combat roles for these mechs, um, I think, you know, they're, they're, they overlap quite a bit. So both of these mechs could play a fire support role. Um, you know, direct fire, they have, they have a pair of PPCs, you know, they have a, the AC-5, even the large laser to some degree, although you'd probably never use it um, unless you were down a PPC or something like that and you lost a weapon. But, you know, both of these mechs can bring tremendous firepower to the table. Um, so I, I really like them in that fire support role. In fact, um, when I play my Free Worlds League fire support lance, you know, I run a Marauder I, and I keep it there with the longbow and, and I sort of have a nice mix of, uh, of direct and indirect fire, a couple of Centurions, that's kind of what I run. Um, so I really like this mech in a fire support lance. Uh, I feel it just feels good. And if somebody gets close to it, you know, I think can, can really do well with those two mediums and all the other weapons at point blank as well as we saw. Um, in those offensive benchmarks. So fire support is, is a definite for me. Uh, frontline as well. Now, I think the 3D is definitely a frontline a front mech, um, excuse me. So 91.9% .9 survivability. You can run this thing up the gut. I mean, it can just get mauled and still keep going. I mean, the only risk is if you lose both of your arms. I mean, the thing's basically a 75 ton large laser. Um, but again, you know, it's still soaking up tons of firepower um, from the opposition and, and that, you know, can allow you to get your other mechs into play. And if you're smart and you keep it at high speed and it's got that plus two mod, you know, that's going to contribute as well. So I think at the end of the day, frontline mech for me is a good fit for the 3D. Now the 3R, I also listed it as a frontline mech. You just have to be careful. Um, you, you know, if that left side starts getting damaged, dump the ammo. I mean, I know guys that play where they put the mech on the field and it's like turn one, they're like, yeah, uh, dump the ammo. And that's fine. You can play that way. I mean, you might as well just play the 3D if you're going to do that. 
But it's, you know, there's truth to that sort of strategy. Like everybody knows it's a weak spot. So if you start taking fire on that left side, I mean, get rid of that ammo. The five points of damage on that AC is just not worth it at all. Um, and absent the ammo, we saw, you know, going back to the survivability, if you look at that donut chart, it had a really good, uh, I mean, again, the 29% the of the deaths or something were attributed to ammo. So you take that, that away, um, that mech can do pretty well in a frontline role. So um, the deviation comes in for me, uh, the 3D being a good defender and the 3R being a potential skirmish candidate. Here's why. So defender's a no-brainer. We talked extensively about the survivability of the 3D. Extremely impressive. Um, so this mech can dig in, hold a position, lay down covering fire, engage enemies if they get close. Um, you know, if you have mechs, try, you know, little guys trying to get around the flank and get to your objectives to blow up your building or whatever it might be, yeah, the Marauder can handle that, no problem. Um, you know, and also again, it can take a beating, so that's a great thing to have there. You know, you don't want um, weak defenders that are going to get knocked out by a salvo of LRMs or something like that. So really solid in that defense role. Meanwhile, the 3R, um, I feel like it has, you know, that three inches, while it's, it's not, you know, that much, uh, the Marauder's not slow, right? It's, you know, can run six, uh, six inches, six hexes. And so I feel like, you know, it can get out there on a flank and you can rotate, you know, your PPC AC, AC fire. Um, you can, you know, fire basically everything um, if you're standing still and build up some heat up to five or if you're walking up to six and then back off one of the PPCs the next turn and cool off. So it can kind of get out there on a flank and, you know, uh, kind of do that hit and fade type move. Um, it can draw some fire off, you know, your, your sort of main thrust, um, your main formation there that might be driving up the center. So you can play it in that role. Um, and that's kind of what, what sort of uh, jumps out at me uh, for this mech. Um, you know, I, I sort of teetered between skirmisher and second line because again, you know, the other thing you can do is keep it in the back out of harm's way if it's in like a bigger lance um lay down some fire with your ppcs and acs don't you know don't you don't have to worry about heat as much if you're sitting in the back um you know just make sure you don't get caught uh in the open or anything like that and then once you know the enemy force is sort of worn down a bit you can kind of move it in to clean up some of the trash with the medium lasers and things like that but you know again when i sort of thought about it uh, you know i think it's probably more compelling in a skirmisher role but that second line role for the 3r uh, probably also feasible as well so that's it. Uh, that's our first comparison. So if I have to pick a winner, uh, and I think you, you know, I kind of hinted at this, you know, my definitive winner here is the 3D, um, strictly because of the survivability. Um, I like the AC5 over the large laser, um, just from the from the sheer mechanics of the weapon. Um, longer range, less heat. I don't like eight points of heat for eight damage on the large laser at 15 inches. It just doesn't do it for me. Um, but again, that ammo uh, on that AC-20, mm, man, I mean, just the survivability of the 3D makes it all worth it. Um, and, you know, the extra four heat sinks, being able to fire both your PPCs and really only bring your heat scale up one or two points, depending on if you walk or ran. So, again, I'm going to take the 3D all day, every day, every time. Um, but really interested to hear what you guys think. Which one do you like best? Let me know. I uh, would love to hear your feedback uh, on, on that. And also just this analysis in general, of course. Um, really appreciate your guys' support. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Give us a like and stay tuned for more. We've got a lot of exciting stuff coming from Death From Above Wargaming. All right, take care, guys.